Fractals by Toby Fractals. Fractals is an infinity complex shape. As you can see, fractals is what we're going to talk about in this presentation. Also, the slide is made by Toby, Sashwa, and Brian. The Sierpinski Triangle. The Sierpinski Triangle is a self-similar fractal, as you can see in the pictures below. It consists of an equilateral triangle with smaller equilateral triangles recursively removed from its remaining area, which is named after the Polish mathematician Winklaw Sierpinski as said in his last name. How to construct the Sierpinski triangle? The first step is to draw a triangle. Then you have to draw a triangle inside the triangle that connects the edges. And then the third step is to draw a triangle inside of those triangles, but not the one that you have just made in the previous step. And then the last step is to consistently repeat step two and three until you want to stop. Where n is the desired iteration step, the perimeter the perimeter's formula is 96n. The area's formula is the square root 34 times 34n. Where n is the number of self-similar pieces, m is the magnificent or factor, and d is the dimension. The fractal dimension of the Sierpinski triangle is d equals m to d power. Cut snowflake. The cut snowflake was one of the first fractals to be discovered. It is constructed using equilateral triangles. Divide the line segment into three segments of equal length. It's shown here. Then draw an equilateral triangle that has the middle segment from step one as its base and points outward. Remove the line segment that is the base of the triangle from step two. Using this, you can achieve very complex shapes, such as this one. Using complex mathematical formulas, we can derive the following. If the original equilateral triangle has sides of length S, the perimeter of the snowflake after n iterations is 3 times s times 4 third to the power n. Simplifying some very long equations, we can derive this statement. The area of the cord snowflake is 8 fifth of the original equilateral triangle. The fractal dimension of the cord curve is estimated to be 1.6186. The man of breath set. The man of breath set is a fractal. That is 2D. It is first drawn by a man named Robert W. Brook and is a set of complex shapes and numbers. The man of Brook set is repeating a function on a complicated plane. There is not, there aren't any perimeter for the shape. In fact, the perimeter of the shape is infinity. But there is an area to the set number. The area of this shape is about 1.50648, but the exact number haven't been found yet. The mango sponge. The mango sponge is a 3D fractal as shown here. It's constructed in the following way. Begin with a cube. Divide each face into nine squares. And therefore the cube gets divided into 27 small cubes. Remove the large cube in the center of the big cube and leave the smaller cube in the middle of each face. This leaves 20 cubes in this cube. The remaining structure here is the first iteration. Now keep iterating these steps until you want to stop. Using some mathematical formulas and observations of the mango sponge, we can conclude that the volume of the mango sponge is 20 by 27 to the power n. The fractal dimension of the mango sponge is around 2.73. Some math questions about fractals. What is a fractal in math?
what fraction of the area of the whole triangle or smaller triangles which make up the first stage of the Sierpinski triangle? What about the second stage? Third stage? Maybe you can make it up to a fourth stage. Try getting as far as you can. Okay, how about we give it to Jaden? What is a fractal in math? It's like an infinite shape that goes on forever. Okay. Like a mathematical shape that's infinity complex. Right. Okay, what fraction of the area of the whole triangle are smaller triangles? Who, do, who wants to do that one? Okay, Jaden. Um, for the first triangle, um, the shaded part makes up three three quarters, and the unshaded part is one fourth. What fraction of the volume of the Mendrus spawn is removed to go from stage zero to stage one? How about one to two? Do the same thing with question two. Go as far as you can. Let's see how far you can go. How many triangles are added to a curve when you go from stage two to three in the Koch snowflake? Do the same thing as two and three. Go as far as you can. From stage zero to once. So let's just um, assume that its area is 27 because it's then divided into 27 tri little square <laughs> cubes. So when you remove the center cube and the six sides, you are, you are removing seven out of 27 of the area. So when you, when yeah. you, you see how many triangles there are, so oh. from stage two, so I think oh. it's like, like, if you see, it's like two like, triangles like, per, point. per point. So it's like, it's like, what is the answer? answer. So six. six. Okay. okay. Tell me, how about we take it? Okay, so now let's check with the answers. So for the answers, for the first question, the answer is, a fractal is a mathematical shape that is infinity complex. Now, the, for the second question, the answer is 1 over 4 and 7 over 16. For the third question, the answer is 7 over 20. And for the last question, the answer is 6. OK, now we need to conclude. Today, we learned about both 2D and 3D fractals. Some 2D fractals are the Sierpinski Triangle, Koch Snowflake, and Mandel Brodsett. One 3D fractal is the Mendel Sponge. These, although famous, are just a small part of the fractal world. I hope this inspires you to explore more. Algebraic Geometry by Burton, Isaac, Kate, Jaden, and Kishev. What is Algebraic Geometry? Algebraic geometry helps solve geometry problems by using algebraic equations and formulas. Branches of algebraic geometry. There are four types of algebraic geometry. Real algebraic geometry, algebraically closed field, Diophantine geometry, and analytic geometry. In this presentation, we are going to tell something about each topic. Solving algebraic geometry problems. We are also going to give you an algebraic geometry quiz that you can solve if you remember the formulas we are going to show you. Pay attention. Real algebraic geometry. Real algebraic geometry is a branch of algebraic geometry. It is used to analyze the geometry of algebraic sets and to draw new solutions to hard, non-convex problems. Computational real algebraic geometry is used to figure out algorithmic aspects to algebraic geometry. Consider the polynomial equation, x squared minus 4 equals 0. The solution of this equation is x equals to plus or minus 2. This equation also represents a parabola opening upwards. Algebraically closed field. Well, how can a type of math be closed? Well, it's not actually closed. It's just a category of numbers. Algebraically closed field is a field in which the numbers in an equation are a root of another number in the equation. Let's consider x squared plus 1 equals 0. There's no real number x that satisfies the equation, but in the field of complex numbers, we can find solutions. Algebraic closed field also studies the properties telling if an equation is algebraically closed or not. 
Analytic geometry. Analytic geometry is a study of geometry using a coordinate system. This type of geometry is used in physics and engineering and is the foundation of algebraic geometry. For example, consider y equals to 2x plus 3. This equation represents a straight line with a slope of 2 and a y intercept of 3. Dalphantine geometry. Dalphantine geometry is a study of Dalphantine equations, which is used a lot in algebraic geometry. In Dalphantine geometry, four theorems are used to solve equations. These theorems solve equations where there are two or more variables. The four Dalphantine equations, Thu's theorem, Siegel's theorem, Ross theorem, and subspace theorem. You can research these in your free time because these theorems are pretty complicated. These theorems play a crucial role in understanding the distribution and density of rational solutions to Dalphantine equations. Now we're going to show you how to solve algebraic geometry problems. A useful formula is this one. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. x, is, x equals the x-coordinate of a point on a circle. y equals the y-coordinate of the same point on the circle. Remember, it has to be the same point or it won't work. h equals the x-coordinate of the center point of the circle, and k equals the y-coordinate of the center point of the circle. Here's an example of the formula. The coordinate of a point on the circle is 5, 5, and the center point is 0, 0. How do you calculate the radius of the circle? According to the formula, when you replace the value x and y with 5, h and k with 0, you get 5 minus 2, 5 minus 0 squared, plus 5 minus 0 squared, equals r squared. So the value is 25 plus 25 equals r squared. So r squared equals 50 and r equals 5 square root 2. So now you know how to use the equation, but where did it come from? It actually originates from the Pythagorean theorem. When you connect the two points and make a perpendicular line to axis x, it makes a right triangle. And by applying the Pythagorean theorem, we get the formula. Formula number two. If you want to know the topmost point of the sphere with radius r, so you can use an algebraic geometry formula to figure out the point. This formula is x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus r squared equals zero. If you know two points in this formula, you can easily solve the top point, topmost point of the sphere. Did you notice the right triangle in aqua blue? According to Pythagorean theorem, r squared equals to z squared plus z squared. The length is in the plane of x and y. Again, according to the Pythagorean theorem, leg square equals to x square plus y square. Substitute the value of leg and we can get r square equals to x square plus y square plus z square. Formula number three, how to solve the quadratic equation using graphing. We will use the equation x squared plus 6x plus 5 as an example. We can start by plugging in a few points. For example, we can plug in 1 to find that the y-coordinate is 12. When you have plugged in a lot of points, you can connect them, and the y-intercepts of the graph are the solutions. This works because at the x-intercept, the y-coordinate is 0. In fact, you can use this to solve any formula using x and y. Formula number 4, a linear equation in two variables. This equation is about a line in two-dimensional affine space, and it can be written in the form of ax plus by plus c equals zero, where a, b, and c are constants. The constants a and b determine the slope, while the constant c determines its position in a two-dimensional plane. If you were to think of it as a ramp, then the slope, a and b, would be how steep the ramp was, and the position which is c, would be where the ramp starts and ends. For example, the equation x minus y plus 1 equals 0 describes a line that starts on 0, 1, and has a slope of 1. You can also rewrite the equation so that it is y equals x plus 1, which is a slope and y-intercept form. Well, how does this equation relate to algebraic geometry? In algebraic geometry, we study algebraic varieties, which are geometric objects. These geometric objects are defined as a set of solutions to polynomial equations. An example of polynomial equations are the linear equations like the one before. 
These are special cases of polynomial equations. They correspond to hyperplanes in the space around them and play an important role in algebraic geometry. Oh, it's review time. Try the quiz. So, Keisha is going to send the link and the code in the chat. And I'm going to show, and I'm going to reshare my screen to show the quiz.